What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here, welcome back to another episode of Switch Tutorials. So I apologise I haven't made a video like this in a while, I haven't made another episode because Nintendo went after some of the older episodes and, you know, those videos have been removed from YouTube, but you can find the whole playlist linked in the description over on BitChute, so there'll be a link to that in the description. Most of the episodes are still on YouTube as well, so I'll still have the YouTube playlist linked in the description as well. So up to this point, we've managed to do most things that you can do on a jailbroken Switch, on custom custom firmware, you're running homebrew, modifying your games, doing cheats and all that kind of stuff, and also uh, updating your system software version. We've covered all of that stuff so far. Um, so in this video, what we're going to be looking at is running completely separate operating systems on your jailbroken switch as well. This is another key feature you, jailbreaking your switch can bring, is your ability to turn your switch into a different kind of device essentially. So you can run uh, Linux on the Switch, which is what we're going to be covering in this episode. But you can also run Android on it and turn it into like an Android tablet. Uh, there's Laka, which can turn it into a retro gaming console. So Ubuntu, of course, is a Linux operating system. So it turns your Switch into a computer. Of course, this is easily reversible. It's just formats an SD card. So, you know, you'll need a separate SD card for this. Um, preferably or you can just back up all the files on your current SD card and put them back on when you want to go back on custom firmware but obviously it's easier to have two SD cards one for um, running you know other operating systems like Linux and then your normal SD card you use in your switch for custom firmware and normal firmware but with two SD cards you can easily switch back and forth between custom firmware and Ubuntu this is not permanent to be clear. So up till now running an actual Linux kernel on the switch has always caused some problems including the potential to damage your screen of your switch. Um, so a lot of people were wary about running Linux but the version of Ubuntu that we're going to install the Linux version is the L4T version of Ubuntu so it doesn't have any of those problems because it's uh, using NVIDIA's Linux for Tegra project so it's actually this operating system is designed for the Tegra processor that uh, the switch uses so it doesn't have any of those issues so you don't have to worry about damaging your screen with this version and this version fully supports the switch's hardware so bluetooth works wireless works uh, pairing your joy cons works uh, t the touch screen will work on ubuntu as well you can dock your switch it will charge all of those functions will work while you're on uh, the Linux operating system, which is pretty cool stuff. So anyway, let's just get into it now because I've talked about this for too long. So what we're going to do is we're going to download the required things. This is the post I got all this information from uh, on GBA temp. So I'll link it in the description. You want to download the switch root to Ubuntu image um, and then download the latest update version 1.31 as well. You need both the original image and the update because the update does not come with the image. So you're going to download both of those files. Um, so I've got them downloaded here and then of course you're going to need Tegra RCM GUI to inject the payload. You'll need the latest uh, Heketa payload as well which will be linked in the description and you're also going to need something to format your SD card in uh, like Rufus or Etcher or something like that so you can mount the image to your SD card. So what you want to do is get an SD card that is at least 16 gigs I believe is the required space um, preferably 16 gigs you can probably go a bit lower than that but uh, get an SD card that's round about 16 gigs or larger uh, that doesn't have anything on it or that you've backed up anything that was already on it because we're going to be formatting it so then we're going to go ahead and run Rufus which is of course used to format the drive and then we're going to select the image so we're going to select the image file click open and then make sure you have selected the SD card as the device that you're going to be formatting here and then we're just going to click start click ok and it's going to start formatting so what this image is going to do it's going to create a few different partitions on your drive it's going to create an ext4 partition that's going to be about eight gigabytes which is the main partition for uh, the operating system that the operating system is going to run on and save files to and then there's going to be a small about 500 megabyte partition uh, that's going to be in fat32 format and that's going to have the bootloader on there. That's going to actually boot you into Linux. So at this point, you just have to wait for the format to complete. It's probably going to take a while. Okay, so once it's done, you can go ahead and close out of Rufus. So we want to go ahead and install the update now. And this could be a bit of a problem depending on what program you used and if it worked properly. But as you can see with me, um, it didn't assign a drive letter to the 500 megabyte partition which contains the bootloader. And I need access to that to put the, um, the update files on. So... Again, I'm going to use trusty Aomi Partition Assistant 
which um, I've probably plugged so many times in my videos now, they should be a sponsor, but uh, yeah, this is a great free program that you can use to, um, to for format and partition your drives. I use it all the time, so what I'm going to do is I'll link it in the description so you can install it. So this little 500 megabyte partition here, 477 megabyte partition, it needs a drive letter. So I'm just going to right click, go to advanced, change drive letter, and then just give it the drive letter I. Click OK, apply, proceed, yes. And there we go. So now it has a drive letter and there it is. It now shows up. Now, you know, if you used Etcher or a newer version of Rufus, maybe it will have assigned a drive letter automatically and you won't have to do that. Um, but anyway, we now have access to this partition so we can put the update on. Okay, so now what we want to do is just delete everything that's on this partition. And then just copy the two folders from the latest update and drag that into the root of the partition. And there we go. So that's the updated bootloader on there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get everything booted up. So we're going to unplug our SD card and plug it back into our switch. And we're going to open up Tegra RCM GUI. Again, link will be in the description. You want to add the Hecate payload in there. So just click the button here to browse for the payload and load it in here. And then we are ready to inject. So all you have to do is boot your switch into RCM mode and make sure it's connected to your computer. Uh, via USB cable and it should say RCM OK then you of course inject the payload and that boots us into the Heketa menu. So then on the Heketa menu you're going to want to go to launch more configs and select L4T and that will start booting into Ubuntu. Now this may take a few minutes you'll see that the screen should power on um, but there'll be nothing on the screen for a little while. Okay, and then you'll get the license agreement popping up here. And as you can see, the touch screen works. I can drag the window around and you can set this up just using the touch screen because whenever you have to do keyboard input, the on-screen keyboard will pop up and you can, you know, type using that. But obviously it, it's not great, the touch screen. So what I'd recommend doing is dock your switch and then plug in a USB keyboard and mouse if you have one, and then it'll be much easier to get through this process and it'll be easier for me to record as well. So I'm switching over here to docked mode. Okay, so here we are, now we've got the thing docked, so we're gonna accept the terms and conditions and click continue. And I would recommend not clicking continue as soon as these windows pop up, because I've noticed a problem where as soon as the next window pops up, if you click continue too quickly, it can get stuck, where the continue button's just grayed out and it never progresses, uh, which is weird. So every, every time you, come to a new window here just give it a few seconds and then click continue and then that should hopefully prevent that kind of issue from happening don't know if that was just a one-time thing but it has happened to me before and then you can connect to your wi-fi so I might as well do that now you can see the the uh, on-screen keyboard came up there as well so you can use the touch screen if you want log in automatically definitely do that and then continue and there we go. Now you just got to wait for the operating system to install. Okay, there we go. We now have Ubuntu running on your switch. So what we want to do first of all is head over to files and go down to other locations. And as you can see, I only have 7.9 gigs available, but of course I have a 128 gigabyte SD card. So we want to be able to utilize that full space of the SD card. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the search button here at the top left and search for disks and open up the disks utility, which is basically disk manager. Then we're gonna to go to the 8.1 gigabyte partition here, the ext4 partition. We're gonna click the little kind of cog gear icon right here, and then select resize, and then drag this bar right over to the right as far as it can go. Click resize, and that will utilize the full space of the SD card. So now if we go back into files, and we go back down to other locations, you can see we now have 125 gigs available space. So there we go. So the next thing you want to do is open up the terminal by right clicking and going to open terminal. And then we're going to do an update first of all. So we're going to do sudo apt update, press enter, enter your password, and it'll start doing the updates. Now I've already done them, so there won't be any more to for it to do. But if you're doing this for the first time, just let it complete. It will probably prompt you to enter the Y key to um, allow 
the packages to be updated and then you just press enter and it will do the updates. Then we're going to do upgrade after that. So sudo apt upgrade and this is going to take even longer. Again, I've already done it. So um, yeah, there's no more things it has to install. But for you, it will probably take quite a while. So and it will also prompt you to um, uh, like accept a few different things. You can use the tab key to switch between OK or cancel and the up and down arrows to select up and down. So just go through that process, do the whole apt upgrade, apt update until your system is fully updated. And then we are good to go to the next step. So the next thing we want to do is add our Joy-Cons, pair our Joy-Cons to Ubuntu. So if we're going to play any games on Ubuntu, like any Steam games or emulators, then we want to be able to use the Joy-Cons if you want to play with the Joy-Cons. You can use keyboard and mouse as well, but it's nice to have the option to use the Joy-Cons if you want. So they're Bluetooth, of course. So we're going to head over to the Bluetooth icon, select that, and then select Bluetooth settings. Obviously, make sure Bluetooth is enabled and then go to the Bluetooth settings. Then we're going to click the little plus icon to add a device and then it's going to be searching for devices. So while it's searching for devices, we're going to take our Joy-Con here and we're going to hold in the uh, sync button, which is the little black button in the middle of the Joy-Con rail. So we're going to hold that button down. And this is the right Joy-Con I'm doing just now. There we go, it shows up. Then we select the Joy-Con, click Next, and let it pair. There we go, done. Then we can quit. And then all the lights will be flashing, which means we're good. So then we'll take the next Joy-Con, so the left Joy-Con, and I'll do the same thing with that one. And there we go, the left Joy-Con is now paired. So now we've got both Joy-Cons paired, and then all the green lights will be flashing at once on the Joy-Cons. If you press the L and R button down at the same time, then that'll stop it, and that means they're fully paired and ready to use. So there we go. So we can close out of the Bluetooth section now. So now you basically have Ubuntu fully configured so you can do whatever you want with it. Um, let's install an emulator so I can show you some of the performance increase settings when you're running games. Um, you can run games on Steam, obviously only older games, the, the Switch is not that powerful. So um, running older games like Valve games like Left 4 Dead on Steam or you know Half-Life, uh, Portal, those kind of games that are much older and are not that uh, intensive. Or games like Hearthstone or League of Legends, you know, games like that are fine. They'll probably run okay. And of course, emulators. So you could install Dolphin and run Wii games and GameCube games. I'm not going to do that because I'll get a copyright strike if I show any video footage from one of Nintendo's games. So I'm going to do, I'm going to install a PlayStation 1 emulator. So I'm going to do sudo apt install PCSXR, which is the PlayStation 1 emulator enter my password, press Y to, to continue, and that will install the PlayStation 1 emulator. Now I've already gone ahead and downloaded a PlayStation 1 game as an example, so I can show you some of the performance settings, um, because there are some settings that you can enable to increase the performance, like overclocking the CPU to two gigahertz, uh, so you can get better performance when running games. Okay, there we go. So we've installed our emulators. So I'm gonna go ahead and search for it here. So. PCSXR, there it is. So we'll open this up, configure the controllers. So if you wanna use your Joy-Cons, you can configure the controller here. So D-pad up, if I change, press up on the D-pad on my Joy-Con, that adds it. So you can map all the buttons here. There's down, left, right. I'll just go through and do all of these. Okay, so I've configured all the Joy-Cons here, I've mapped all the buttons to the correct buttons for a PlayStation 1 controller, and then then we'll go to the graphics settings and we want to turn things up to, you know, the highest settings. So I'll set uh, beautiful settings, which will, again, try and stress the system as much as possible here. So we can see the kind of drops in frame rate. We'll do 1080p full screen. Um, we'll set the frame rates. We will limit the frame rate to 60 FPS. And we'll show the FPS as well. That'll do. Okay, so I've got a PS1 game here, so I'm going to run Crash Bandicoot 2 Cortex Strikes Back. Just because it's quite a demanding PS1 game, I want to see the frame rate, you know, I want to see it struggle um, to see what kind of frame rates we're getting. And then we'll do the performance increases and see how much it improves things. So as you can see, we're like frame rates going all over the place. We have went down to 16 FPS there. It's really all over the place. It can't maintain a stable 60 frames per second, as you can see. You know, we're in 40, 50, 40, 30. It's really not handling things. 
So, and I am using my Joy-Cons here as well as the controllers. Okay, so here we are spawned into the main kind of room. And as you can see, again, frame rate is really not doing well. 60, 50, 40s, 28 there. It went down to that went down to the 20s there for a second. So as you can see, it's not perfect. So what I'm going to do is we're going to keep the game running in the background here. And I'm going to right click, open in terminal. And we're going to enter the commands to improve the performance to overclock the system. So I don't actually know what those commands are. So I'll have to go back to that post on uh, GBA temp. Uh, okay, so down here it says here to force max frequency. To force max frequency run echo performance sudo t um, and then this command right here. So I'm going to copy this whole command, paste it in, press enter, enter my password and that should set everything to performance so we get the best performance out of the out of the um, switch's hardware. So now if we go back, if I just resume the game here and continue playing, I can already feel it much, much smoother right now in the game. Again, the capture card may not reflect that because there's definitely like a frame skipping or frame rate issue with the capture card recording Linux. I'm not entirely sure why, but it'll probably look pretty choppy for you guys. But for me playing it, it's much, much smoother. You can see the frame rate is not really dropping below kind of, what, 50... 58 maybe but it's nowhere near going it's nowhere near as erratic as it was so you can see that that definitely increased the performance there's other commands as well i don't think these are necessary though there's to activate two gigahertz mode here it says uh, echo one i'm pretty sure this max frequency setting we just enabled activates the two gigahertz mode anyway but just in case it doesn't you've got like these two commands here so you can paste this one in and then enter the password and then you enter the second command to activate it and yeah that's the clock speed I believe so now if we go back into the game again I'm pretty sure it it active the first command activated it anyway but go back into the game here yeah the frame rates is still the same so I don't think that's actually made any difference but I could be wrong but yeah, there you go. You can see it's, it's you know, sticking at 60 much more. Maybe that did make a difference because it's not even going down to 59 anymore. So that's a solid 60 FPS. Either that or the frame rate counter is just glitched off. Oh no, there we go. It jumped back down again. I don't know if that made a huge difference, but you can definitely see that activating the performance mode command in terminal has definitely improved the performance of the game. So yeah, definitely activate that command if you're going to be running any any games on the Switch in Ubuntu. But of course, it's a just a desktop computer essentially. You can use it for just browsing the web or documents or you know whatever it is that you want to do with it. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And in the next video, we're going to look at installing Android on the Switch, um, which is for portable mode, of course. Um, whereas Ubuntu is great for docked mode, you get a full desktop computer essentially. Uh, Android is perfect for portable mode um, because of, you know, just how it's designed for touch screens and stuff. So yeah, we'll be looking at that in the next video. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.